Greetings, Deep Dive Podcast listeners. This is your boy, Sam Orham, coming at you with another episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Guys, we got part two tonight of how to become unstuck. What does it mean to be stuck? We got part two, and it's going to be incredible. Hopefully, you had an opportunity to listen to part one last Thursday night. If you have not, you certainly want to go to uh, the Deep Dive Podcast live listen to last week's episode but tonight's episode is going to conclude the notion of what it takes to become unstuck or why do you even feel that you're stuck so we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight uh before we do that though i always like to thank all of our guests for tuning in all over the world i really appreciate your support it means more than you know this is a podcast that mainly focuses on empowerment so when I get an opportunity just to share a message of empowerment with so many people, uh, that gets me excited. So I thank you very much for tuning in all over the world. We're going to continue to bring you the best possible content, the best messages of empowerment. I know I keep promising uh, more guests, but when I look into the uh, Facebook group that we have and all the messages that we get, most people People really, really, really enjoy something tangible that they can use, and that is the empowerment. So we're going to continue to do that, um, and we're going to give you some entertainment as well. So let's get ready to jump right into the topic for this particular week. Again, this is part two, so hopefully you had a, an opportunity to listen to or take a look at part one last week when we talked about how to become unstuck. Well, we went through a litany of things last week on how to become unstuck. But as I talked to you about uh, on the last episode toward the end, I said something to the effect of even when all of those things that we talked about last week take place and you've gone through all the things that we talked about and, you know, exercising and you know just focusing in on you and and self-development all of those things sometimes you still feel stuck well when is it time to just kind of seek help getting unstuck that's what this episode tonight uh, is about it's a part or a continuation of that next level of what it may take to not feel stuck in your life or in a relationship or in your business or whatever the case may be. Feeling stuck can happen at many different stages in life. You know, it could be, you know, earlier stages of life, your teen years, or when you first become an, uh, an adult. It certainly happens for a lot of people in what they call a midlife crisis, right? So they get stuck. They start to feel, well, am I a youngster or am I an old person or whatever it may be? And they start to have this, this conversation in their head. Remember we talked last week about analysis paralysis? Well, you know, you start to have those conversations at different stages and that's okay. We just have to be able to circumvent that with whatever it means in terms of getting help. If you have persistent though, feelings of whether it's a low mood or whether it's, you know, worrying all the time, stressing, anxiety, any of these things that uh, give you a sense of stuckness, again, if that's a word, is, is if it's getting in your way and, and, and forcing you or causing you to not be able to cope with certain things, um, is, is hindering your ability to cope, then it's a good time to speak to a doctor or a healthcare professional to take the next level um, in terms of why you feel stuck. Look, a lot of people, they don't understand that depression, it is an illness, right? Mental health, in a lot of cases, we've talked about this in the past, there's something called mental health, but there's something called mental illness. You have to understand that sometimes there are chemicals in your body, there are things that happen within your body, there are hormones that's going on in your body that may cause you to feel a certain way. That you cannot control. It doesn't matter how motivated you are. You can't wish it away. You can't affirm it away. I affirm this and that. You can't do that because it may be something medically. Uh, and it may require you having some type of medical intervention by a healthcare professional or a doctor. 
right? We just have to get to a point where we're, first of all, conscious and aware of that, but then also having the ability and, and not being so reluctant to seek help in, in terms of a professional. A lot of times, man, people just like, you know, they won't go to the doctor. And, and especially in the Black community, they look at therapy or mental health uh, professionals or things of that nature, a uh, sign of weakness. I tell you, is absolutely not. So if if you have chemical imbalances in your body and your brain and things are going on that's that you cannot control, I don't care who you are, I don't care how tough you think you are, you can't control those type things. And sometimes it's it's prudent to get some type of medical intervention. That's exactly what you want to do. That's what you want to do. But now what do you not do or want to do when you feel stuck? Well, you don't want to get to a point where you have extra stress. We call that you tighten the, the screw. Have you ever had an experience where you tighten a screw with a screwdriver or a drill and you tighten it so tight that you actually strip it? You'll strip the screw because you've tightened it so much. That happens a lot when you start to overstress about feeling stuck in your situation. To reduce any extra stress and worry, uh, that can arise or come about when feeling stuck, you got to keep certain things in mind. Now, remember, you're talking about reducing this level of anxiety, reducing this level of, of stress. There's some things that you want to keep in mind. First, first of all, try not to over-identify the situation. What does that mean? Well, look at it like this. What's the best way to explain it to you? Say, um, I'm feeling stuck rather than I am stuck. Now think about those two phrases. I'm feeling stuck rather than I am stuck. When you say you're feeling stuck, what happens is we know it's a temporary situation. You know it's a temporary situation. It's like, yeah, I'm feeling stuck right now, but, right? But when you say I am stuck, then there's no, subconsciously, there's no room to move forward. So you have to identify or not over identify what the situation is. Hey, look, I'm just feeling stuck right now. Um, what do I need to do to move on? It's a subtle but essential difference in those two phrases. But it allows you to, to feel from the, the phrase that I'm feeling stuck, it allows you to understand that that feeling will pass. It's just temporary. One moment you may feel stuck, the next moment you may feel tired or delighted or any number of emotions, right? But they're all temporary. And that's the thing you wanna take away from that. It is actually a temporary situation. So what else do you not wanna do when you feel stuck? Well, you do not, I repeat, you do not wanna beat yourself up. You do not want to beat yourself up. You can't because that's just going to make a bad situation worse. Most people like to have clarity and control over their lives, right? So that feeling of being stuck, it can get really, really frustrating. And when people get frustrated, they start to beat themselves up. Well, rather than beat yourself up over feeling stuck, treat yourself with some level of self-compassion. Give yourself a break. <laughs> Give yourself a break because all of these things won't solve the issues. It'll just kind of perpetuate a bad situation, just make a bad situation worse, right? So give yourself a break. Have some type of self-compassion. Yeah, I know I'm hard on myself a lot of times, and a lot of people are hard on yourselves, especially when you're a champion. You have that kind of mindset. But you also have to be cognizant of the fact that if you beat yourself up a lot, you're really just tearing yourself down subconsciously. And once your subconscious takes control, take control, then your conscious mind doesn't have a chance. So don't beat yourself up. Something else you don't want to do is don't focus on that stuck area as the only thing in your life. Some people that I converse with, it's like this, whatever this is, is the only thing in their lives. And when that this is not working to the degree that they want it to work and they feel stuck, they act as if 
that thing is the only thing in their life. Well, no, you don't want to focus in that stuck area as it being the only thing in your life. Remember that each situation that makes us feel stuck is just one part of your life. It's just one part of it. It's not everything. For example, if you feel stuck at work, well, spend some time appreciating what's good or, or about your health or what's good about your relationships or what's good about your friendships. Just because you're stuck at work, that doesn't mean your life is stuck. That just means your work life is stuck. And we'll work on that. But don't encompass all of the aspects of your life under one umbrella and say, hey, look, my life is just miserable just because your job suck or you're stuck at your job. No, 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 don't do that. So just because you're stuck at work, you know, spend some time appreciating the good things. Spend some time appreciating the fact that you, you have a healthy lifestyle or you have healthy relationships with your family or your friends or whatever it may be. Focus on the positive. Something else you don't want to do when you feel stuck is to try to blame other people. Try not to blame other people. I mean, don't, at the end of the day, as I say this every podcast, but you are the master of your fate. You're the captain of your soul. At the end of the day, it's all about you. What are you going to do with your life, right? Try not to blame other people. I mean, we don't live in a vacuum and, you know, other people's decisions and actions, they can kind of impact your lives, but dwelling on them is not going to be productive. And when I say they can impact your life, I mean, let's talk about the job. We just talked about that, right? The decisions that your employer, not your boss, I don't call anybody your boss, God is your boss. The decisions that your employer makes yeah, I may have an impact on your life, but dwelling on that person's or company's issues or challenges or whatever, it may not be productive. In fact, it's counterproductive in a lot of cases for your life. And it starts to have you feel in some type of way. You're feeling stuck, but you're feeling stuck based on somebody else's life. That's not yours. That's theirs. You don't want to consume their negativity. You know what I mean? You want to create your own path. So don't allow those things, even though they may impact you in, in, in certain ways. It is your job, you know, but you still want to be productive in your own life, your own goals, your own ambitions. You know, give other people the benefit of the doubt sometimes. Consider that they may be going through something and, you know, they may be doing the best that they can. I don't know, whatever the case may be, but don't try not to blame other people's for your other people for your misfortunes. We do that a lot. We tend to do that a lot. I think when you take ownership, of who you are, if you take ownership and accountability of who you are and the things that you do, then you'll not that that you'll develop that sense of power and control because you take ownership. In my businesses, I have uh, uh, multiple businesses, as some of you know. And anytime something goes wrong, no matter who did something or who does something or whatever happens, I take responsibility. I'm the founder and CEO of my companies, and that means whatever happens, ultimately the buck stops with me. I take that responsibility. Now, I may not. Even, it may have been in another state, something I couldn't even control. But I'm the founder of the company. That means that I have to take the responsibility. What that also does, though, it gives me the power internally to know that I'm still in control of my life, whether it's stuck based on other people's decisions or you know actions i'm still 
con in control of the outcome because you know what? I take account accountability. I take responsibility. I'm not blaming anybody else. This is what needs to happen. This is what did happen. I'm going to solve it. I'm going to resolve it. That's what you want to be able to do. Ultimately, make sure you're in charge of every aspect of your personal and your professional life. Now, let me make this distinction. There's a difference between when I'm saying being in charge of these things and being in control. A lot of people blur that line where it's like, okay, yeah, I'm in, I'm, I'm in charge of my life. But you don't want to be in a situation where you like like a control freak. Okay, you don't want to be that control freak. You just you do want to be in charge, but you don't want to be a control freak. And I know, I know there's a there's a very only a slight difference between those words, but I think you understand what I'm saying. For me, a lot of times I try to control every situation. I know certain situations I can't control. In fact, some situations only God can control. But I try to be, I, you know, I used to try to be that control type person anyway, to control every aspect of my life. But then I got to a point where I started to think about certain things. It's like, man, the more I tried to control it, the worse it seemed to get. So I got to a point maybe a couple of years ago where I just said, you know, in my prayer, God, just lead me. I submit. Just lead me. I don't know everything I need to know. I haven't experienced everything that I need to have in order to accomplish the things that I look to accomplish. So in order to do that, then I need to be led. I need to be led. So that means you just don't blame other people. Just be willing to be led. Don't doubt your ability to handle your decisions. You know, again, a part of getting unstuck, like a part of being a leader, a part of having that feeling of being in charge is knowing and not doubting your ability to handle your decisions. You're going to make some great decisions. You're going to make some bad decisions. But it's a, a each decision is just a part of the process, whether it's good or bad. You know, if you're really stuck, you know, you're stuck with a choice, between two options they may the options may be equal or one may be more obvious but here's the thing when you consider the cost of staying in limbo the limbo of indecision that means you're not going doing anything you may find it better to just commit to a decision even if it's a wrong decision in other words, I'm saying there's a right decision, there's a wrong decision, and there's indecision. Well, indecision is the worst of the three. Just make a decision. If you're right, great. If you're wrong, you learn. But to just not do anything, there is no movement. I'll say this again. There is no movement in indecision. I think I said last week, one of the things you wanted to be able to do in terms of making a decision is, uh, you know, just decide what's for dinner. We go through these things all the time. Well, what's for dinner? I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What do you want? Remember I said that last week, right? Well, imagine indecision. Well, you don't make a decision and I don't make a decision. Guess what happens? You don't eat. <laughs> Nobody eats, right? But if you make a decision, hey, look, well, I'm going to go ahead and get this. You know, and this person, well, I'm not going to get anything. Well, a decision was made, at least one person would eat. But with no decision, no one would eat. 
It's the same thing with your life. Make a decision. Being in limbo is not a good thing when you're talking about becoming unstuck. Once you've made that decision, once you've committed either one or one way or the other, then you can move forward with the uh, self-belief, the confidence that you're able to handle what's next, right? Trust yourself. More importantly, trust your creator. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of uh, feeling stuck before we get out of here is um, understanding that humans, the particular stuckness, there's that word again, well, again, I don't know if it's a word or not, but the particular stuckness of humans can be, you know, a state of mind. It could be a choice, either a state of mind, a certain perspective, a certain whatever. But remember this, it's never too late to start over. It's never too late to start over. Now, someone would say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up there in age. I'm not, I don't want to start over with this, this, and this. When I'm talking about starting over, I'm talking about from a mindset, mindset standpoint. I'm talking about from a mental standpoint. It's never too late to start over. That means you do the things that we talked about last week and couple that with the things that we're talking about tonight and uh, for this episode. And just shift your mindset, guys. There's a saying that I have, um, and I, I use this saying all the time, and I say, God didn't make winners and losers. God just made choosers. And where we are today is based on our choices, whether that's good, or whether that's bad, or whether we feel stuck. Where we are today is just based on our choices. The good thing about God is God is a forgiving God. And even if you feel stuck, even if you feel some type of way, all you have to do to change your life is to change your choices. And you can do that instantaneously. Start over by changing your choices. Start over in life by changing your choices. That doesn't mean because you're older, and you don't feel like you got to start a new career. I'm not talking about that. Change your choices and start winning right now, right away. You can do that today. Your life can take a totally different turn today just by you deciding to change your choices, just by you doing a few things and choosing to win. You know, choose to see your situation through a different lens for change. And then just see what happens. See what opens up for you just by you choosing to see your situation through a different lens, that's going to be magical for some people. I don't care where you are, I don't care what country you're tuned in from, that's going to be powerful, right? So hopefully, by using these tips that, that we've talked about over the past couple of weeks, you know, you'll get unstuck, if you will. You'll find your, your power, you'll find your strength, you'll find your stroke, and ultimately, you'll change your life. And even if that change starts today, it's okay. It's worth it. That's what you want to be able to do. You change your choices. You change your life. You become unstuck. Life becomes uh, a blessing for you in whatever capacity and to whatever degree you want that to be. So with that, guys, I'm going to conclude the second part of, of this episode I thank you guys so very much for tuning in over the past couple of weeks and understanding how to get unstuck when you feel unstuck. Look, we all go through these things, so don't feel bad. You know, just, just start utilizing some of the tips and tools that we talked about and make it happen for your own life, okay? So we're going to continue to win. We're going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to power, empower. With that, I appreciate everybody joining me on this week's episode of the Deep Dive Podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, download, and share the podcast. Go to the website. It's the deep dive podcast live. Guys, I need your help. Go to go check out the episodes. Go to the YouTube channel. It is uh, the Deep Dive Podcast with Sam Moore. Make sure you put my name. I think there, um, there's another Deep Dive Podcast. And, um, you know, just, just kind of, you know, Give some support. Give some love. These things mean a lot to, to me, but it means more uh, a lot to the audience as well all over the world. So continue to do that. 
And I'm looking forward to continue to bring you messages of empowerment and entertainment. We're going to have some fun the rest of this year, the rest of this season. Let's just get it. All right. So with that, I appreciate everybody joining me for this episode. God bless each and every one of you. And I'll see you on the beaches of the world.